tracing all 870 miles of the splendid Welsh coastline. The Wales Coast Path is a long distance walking trail that will immerse you in the beating heart of Wales. From Chepstow in the south, right up to Queen's Ferry in the north, this is the world's first coastal path to ever cover an entire country, weaving through 11 national nature reserves, dozens of protected areas and conservation sites, 111 marine sites of special scientific interest, 14 heritage coasts, three world heritage sites, and you get the idea. There's a lot here. Pepper in a wealth of spectacular architecture, more castles per square mile than any other country in Europe, landscapes in a national language that both seem plucked straight out of Tolkien's Middle Earth. And all in all, you've got a pretty spectacular place for a walk. One of the best things about the Wales Coast Path is hands down the beaches. You'd be hard pressed to find sands this vast anywhere on earth. With sheep outnumbering people by three to one in Wales, it's rare that beaches ever get busy by conventional standards. Still, if you're after absolute peace and seaside solitude, stroll a bit further down the path from any semblance of crowds and chances are you'll have another beach all to yourself. Finding secret spots that feel millions of miles away from humankind is definitely one of the most rewarding aspects of hiking here. While road trips and railway odysseys have their place, when you travel by foot, you're bound to find gems you might well have sped past otherwise. Take Cafe Moor in Pembrokeshire. You'd be forgiven for missing this humble, converted fishing boat of a food truck, but you'd definitely be missing out. Here on the banks of Freshwater West Beach, founder John Williams has built his own culinary kingdom, namely by combining his passions for good food and the sea with lava. The Welsh name for their native edible seaweed, lava is actually the same variety of plant as the famed Japanese nori. Traditionally gathered on the beach, hung to dry in thatched roof huts, boiled, minced, mixed with oats, and finally fried into lava bread, a dish embedded in the Welsh culinary DNA. But John's taken it to the next level. From lava bread burgers with ketchup and seaweed stout, to lava bread pesto and seaweed infused rum, Cafe Moore has grown to become the larger Pembrokeshire food company, winning John numerous esteemed awards and TV accolades everywhere from Japan to the USA. After a long day on the path, a seaweed burger and a sunset beer on the beach really hits the spot. That's a lot of bread. I'll finish up a bit of seaweed salt back. Of course, it's not all uninhabited coastline. Most stretches of the Wales Coast Path are punctuated by quaint fishing villages, which make welcome pit stops on any walk. Whether you're planning a high intensity through hike or simply a few scenic seaside strolls on a weekend away, these are convenient places to recharge, relax, and soak up Welsh culture at its most authentic. Locals here are famously warm-hearted, and there's no better place to get to grips with local hospitality than at that primary Welsh social institution, that cozy cultural epicenter, the pub. There's plenty of good drink to be had, and a steady supply of freshly caught seafood, though the fishermen themselves are a little harder to come by these days than they used to be. Regardless of your travel budget, there's a good range of accommodation available all along the Wales Coast Path. And while a traditional village stay is a must, it's understandable that some travelers might want to stay surrounded by nature entirely. If so, forest is a cool place to base yourself for a few days. Reminiscent of the many eco-friendly living projects that have been springing up in Wales for decades, though markedly more stylish, this camp is a good place to pair with the Wales Coast Path if you're keen to escape civilization without sacrificing any of its simplest comforts, which we all know are the best kind anyways. Most everything here is sustainably sourced, and as much as possible is locally crafted fitting well with the insurmountable new wave of independent makers and creative entrepreneurs self-starting in unexpected places all across this country. 
with passion and a lot of hard work, a respect for tradition and the environment surrounding them. Together, they're redefining what it means to be made in Wales. You're rarely very far from a mountain in Wales, while the path traces the edge of legendary Snowdonia, where rough and rocky peaks have made it a full-blown adventure capital. There's another mountain range that's been kept a bit more secret. The Cambrian Mountains have earned themselves the nickname the Desert of Wales, though that's certainly not because the region is arid. It's the lack of people, towns, and roads that gave this lush, varied wilderness its desert reputation. Today, it's one of the last remote wilderness areas left in southern Britain. While it's not officially part of the Wales Coast Path, when you're walking through Caradigian and Cardigan Bay, these mountains make for an easy day or half-day trip. The scenery is incredible, and it's definitely a radical change from what you'll be used to on the coast. You're sure to stumble upon a few curiosities too. Oddities like Devil's Bridge are a standout, three separate but coexisting bridges, the oldest of which is medieval and allegedly built by Satan, who I was surprised to learn was such a competent engineer. But perhaps a more pleasant surprise was Felin Ganol on the way back to the shores of Caradigian. This water-powered mill dates back to the 1700s, but hadn't been used in well over half a century before it and the accompanying cottage-style home were purchased in 2006 by Anne and her husband. Is this strong enough, weak enough, is that okay? By that point, the mill was completely derelict and its pond reduced to a dried up ditch. Though it had never been their intention to open a mill, Anne started to wonder, could they get the wheel to turn again? A laborious rabbit hole of meticulous repairs later, and the mill's antique machinery was completely restored, functioning just as it had some 150 years earlier. It's not hard to guess what they tried next. Milling flour by water wheel requires no electricity whatsoever, and even the water used flows back into the river it was drawn from, completely unaffected. So it's a clean and sustainable means of production. Further, stone ground flour actually retains a lot more nutrients than the typical means of industrial roller grinding. It's a win-win all around. Today, Felon Ganol mills a range of organic, locally grown grains, and its ability to work with much smaller batches means that the flour is fully traceable and fully delicious. Supplied to local food shops, hotels, and trendy London bakeries alike, it seems if you're going to find a project like this anywhere, it's probably somewhere in the middle of nowhere in Wales. It's easy to get distracted by seaside scenery here, and just as easy to get distracted by the people and places that create the culture surrounding it. Whether you're after an adrenaline-fueled adventure hike or simply some beautiful beach walks, the Wales Coast Path is something special. Of course, you don't need to hike it all at once. Plenty of people choose to walk it section by section whenever they can over the span of years. That'd be pretty cool. Either way, a bit of sunshine, exercise, and fresh seaside air will definitely do you some good.